Well, it's Thursday, and my allergies are gone today, which is nice. Feel a little bit better. Um, every day's a struggle in this body of flesh and humiliation, but aches and pains are aches and pains. And I'm thinking, yeah, well, I'm no spring chicken. I'm 55 years old, so of course this body is breaking down. And that's what happens when you get older. The body breaks down. This humiliation is going back to the soil from whence it came. And that's what happens. The dying process, dying to die, is your body breaks down. And that's normal for every single human being. We look forward to the snatching away in the presence of the Lord while we are still living. That was Paul, right back to our original Apostle Paul, first member of the body of Christ. His expectation was that. Otherwise, he wouldn't have wrote it in the scriptures that we wait for the presence of the Lord. Our bodies need changing really, really bad. I know this every day, and every single one of you know that every day, that we do need a change. We're done with this pain and suffering of this mortality. But uh, we continue on and endure to the presence of the Lord until whatever happens, repose or being changed while we're living. Because the living will change. There will be some alive, and I believe we're already in that era where those who are alive will be alive to the presence of the Lord, and that's how close we are. I wanna share some good news, though. There's a restaurant that just opened up, up the street from me, about five minute drive up the street, and it's called East Coast Pub and Eatery. I know the owner. And I went to him two days ago, went and seen him, and uh, he knew my brother Rick. As you know, Rick is dead, but he knew him, and he was shocked about that because uh, Rick worked for him. When he had his restaurant in, uh, in Calgary, which he still does, he has his Lake Market, East Coast Market and Grill in Calgary, Alberta, and I live in Airdrie, Alberta, so yeah, he opened this restaurant up here which is called uh, East Coast Bar and Grill. So I asked him about getting a delivery job, delivering food, no big deal. And he hired me immediately. So I start tomorrow in Calgary because they haven't got the delivery service out here yet. But when they do, I'll be their top driver in delivering food, which is good. It's a nice little job. It, you know, I'm just driving around, which is great, and delivering food that I love. It's East Coast, so it's Nova Scotia, where I'm from originally. And it's fish and chips, it's like a lot of seafood, and it's great in that sense, where I appreciate the food. So of course, this is gonna be a great job. I'll get to meet people, get to deliver food that makes them happy. It's a wonderful thing. So I thank God for this blessing. It'll get me out of the house, and I'll work from 11 in the morning till like 10 at night or something. It's, it's no big deal, but I'm thankful, very thankful. And I knew this restaurant was opening up and it finally did. And I said, there's the job for me. I can't do much at 55, but delivering food is gonna be pretty good. All right, thank you for joining me. And we're still in Romans in the Concordant Commentary on page 244 and is still dealing with the conduct of the saints. And it's Romans chapter 14, verse one. Fellowship among God's saints should, should not be based on knowledge or ignorance. God receives us even when we are feeble in faith. We should not cut from our fellowship. One who, ha who does not follow all our deductions from the scriptures. Neither should we make light of his scruples. No foods are forbidden now, yet the undoubted wisdom of the food regulations under the law may well help us to determine what is best without abridging our liberty to eat all things with a good conscience. We may not dictate to one another in these things, they are to be settled by the individual conscience before God. The observance of days is also a matter of individual preference. 
It is abundantly evident that no day is, ab is above another, so far as the scriptures are concerned. The seventh day, the Sabbath, was never given to the nations. To observe it is to put ourselves under the curse of the law. The first day of the week, called Sunday, is never once referred to in the scriptures, properly translated. The phrase should always be rendered one of the Sabbaths. In order to get the first day of the week, it is necessary to alter one to first, to insert the word day and change the plural Sabbaths to the singular week. It is a desperate attempt to find some scriptural excuse for the prevalent observance of Sunday, quote unquote. There is nothing wrong in the setting aside of a day to the Lord. Custom has made Sunday the most convenient for this purpose. But let us, let us not mar the word of God in order to uphold this practice. Neither should we ride roughshod over the religious scruples of those who look upon Sunday as a day sanctioned by God for divine worship. They have no basis for their belief. Nevertheless, their conscience demands consideration. It is not ours to pass judgment in these matters. It is not the place of the church, quote-unquote, to fix any days and condemn those who do not observe them. Only the observance of days as a matter of law-keeping is condemned. Though they may be nothing wrong, there may be nothing wrong in working on Sunday, it is wrong to keep it as a means of salvation. The same is true of the seventh day or Sabbath. The distinction, dis, distinctions instituted by the law between, the, between things which are to be reckoned clean and unclean have no place in the economy of grace. God has no hesitancy to, in associating with us sinners of the nations. A strict Jew could not eat our food without being contaminated. Yet before God, we are holy and the Jew is unclean. Hence, no food is ceremonially unclean. It is only an uninstructed conscience which counts things common. The liberty to eat anything should not be allowed to infringe on the prejudices of others. Those who have a conscience about partaking of certain foods are easily offended. We should not stand on our rights, but seek rather to retain, restrain our liberty to conform to the religious scruples of our fellow believers. This is not a definition of the kingdom of God, but a statement of its bearing on this subject. The distinctive truth for the present economy was not yet known and the saints are included in the kingdom of God in its widest aspect, as denoting the sphere of God's rule, which is sovereign rule, sovereign above all. These are safe tests to apply to all our intercourse with our fellow saints. Will it provoke strife? If so, let us avoid it. Will it edify? If not, let us forego it. Peace and edification of others rather than our own privileges should be pressed. Things which we can do with a good conscience before God may give dire offense if done before some of his saints. Knowledge puffs up. There is a prideful tendency to make a show of our liberty in Christ. But grace considers the weak rather than the strong. If there is to be peace and unity, it must come from the condescension of those who are able. The weak in faith are not asked to consider the strong. Christ is the most brilliant example in this as all as in all else. What a marvelous condescension he displayed in his dealings with his disciples, whose weakness and lack of faith was a constant source of distress to him. If he could bridge... The great gulf between him and his disciples, surely we can bear with those whose infirmities we all share. And we all share the same infirmities in the flesh. We're all still human. Members of the body of Christ, we are all still human. So we should not look upon others as doing this or that as being wrong. 
No, we should look at the sovereignty of God, who gives all and is all. Makes no difference. They're stumbling on their stumbling way, but that does not give us license to be elevating ourselves above anybody else. We eat with a good conscience. We are free in Christ. We recognize this as believers. But there's many out there, including believers, who believe other things. Maybe they don't want to eat a certain food. But is it toward, is it toward themselves as far as keeping law? Well, that's condemnation. But there's no condemnation in Christ. So how could any true believer really eat food and consider it uh, before God as a breaking of some kind of law, because we don't. God is gracious in giving us all, and we know this, and we have that liberty in Christ, but don't use it, use it as an incentive to the flesh, and that's what that scripture means. If you're using your freedom as an incentive to the flesh and puffing yourself up, then that's no good. That's no good. Stay low, keep low, Stay secret in that sense, where you eat in private your own way. Nobody can condemn you for eating anything, as you are free in Christ. But as far as health is concerned and human health and things like that, that's great. If you want to improve your health and you don't want to eat certain foods, that's great. But you're not doing it as to the law. You're doing it as to your own health and trying to keep healthy. That's all. So that's my explanation of that. We have the freedom in Christ. So hold on to the freedom in Christ and keep it in that sense where we're not puffing ourselves up above anybody else. Happy Thursday. Have a wonderful day. Grace and peace. And we will talk, you to, talk to you tomorrow.